and welcome to our first video of 2021. We hope everyone had a fun or safe new year, or even both if that's possible. We're going to kick off 2021 with a discussion on modeling the concentration of a solution in a continuously stirred tank reactor, or CSTR. A CSTR is often assumed to have this instantaneous perfect mixing, which is an idealized concept where the solution in the tank is perfectly homogeneous and there's no concentration gradient across the tank. Uh, even though this doesn't really exist in reality, it's often a safe enough, safe enough assumption for most processes. And that's what we're gonna assume in our study today where we're looking at our, well, that's kind of big, we're looking at our influent coming in here so this is our influent is basically just means the inflow into a system it's going to have some flow rate volumetric flow rate and some kind of concentration it's coming into our CSTR where we're assuming that as soon as this influent mixes with the tank it's instantaneously perfectly mixed so anywhere in this tank is all the exact same concentration and then we have uh, our effluent. So the stream leaving a system is known as an effluent. Um, that's gonna have our volumetric flow rate and some kind of concentration, um, you know, effluent concentration. Uh, and just as kind of a bonus or side note here, an, an effluent can also be an influent and, and vice versa. So just if we had a second system here, this influent the influent for this system, no, excuse me, the effluent for this system would be the influent for this system. So just to kind of keep the terminology straight there, because you'll see it uh, time and time again in most engineering discussions. So, okay, so what we're interested in modeling here is the concentration in the tank at any given time. For example, if we start with a concentration uh, of zero, of whatever, uh, we'll probably say salt because it's a conservative substance that completely disassociates. So, you know, it's it's something that's kind of the perfect substance to talk about in, in a CSTR type of example like we we're talking about. So if, if we say we have zero milligrams per liter of solution in the tank and we have an influent concentration of 10 milligrams per liter and a volumetric flow rate of 100 liters per second, then what would the concentration of the solution in the tank be after some given time t, or any given time t, really? And what we'll see is uh, that eventually, with enough time, our uh, concentration in the tank is going to approach the concentration of the influent. That's probably intuitive, right? If eventually, these are going to basically be equal as well as our concentration of our effluent out is going to be, basically we're going to have the same concentration through the whole system. That's obviously not exactly right. You know, a mathematician would probably argue that no, that'll never happen. It's going to be asymptotic, but yeah, as an engineer, you know, for all practical reasons, it's basically going to be equal at some point. Uh, and this also works in reverse. So if we said we started with 100 milligrams per liter or whatever, and we were flowing clean water in, eventually we would flush the system more or less back to zero, right? Or, or to whatever our concentration in is, even if it never truly reaches that. So, all right, let me quickly pause the video and we'll jump into starting our solution here. Okay, so let's go ahead and start uh, putting down some aspects of this model. And, you know, we, we talked a lot about these concentrations, but really what we're interested in is the mass, right? So anytime you have your volumetric flow rate and a concentration, you know a lot about the mass. Uh, in this case, we want the rate of change in the mass of the system over time. So if we have change in mass, or really rate of change of mass, is going to be equal to the rate of mass in minus the rate of mass out of the system. 
And so, you know, conceptually, that's what we want to do. Mathematically, we can rewrite this as our change in mass with respect to time is going to be equal to our flow rate in times our concentration in. So that was what we were just saying. Uh, basically, if you have those two, you have your mass flow rate minus this, the same here. We have our uh, volumetric flow rate out times our concentration out. Now, the reason that often it's assumed that a CSTR has instantaneous and complete mixing is because it allows us to simplify this model somewhat. So if, if we assume that you know the concentration here is the same as the concentration here, well then it's the same as the concentration leaving the system, which means that the concentration in the tank Come on, there we go. It's going to be equal to the concentration out, the concentration leaving the system. And that is going to be equal to our mass in the system divided by the volume. So whatever, you know, just like if you think about this being uh, our volumetric flow rate of like 100 liters per second per, oops. Try that again. Liters per second times 10 milligrams per liter would be equal to a thousand uh, milligrams per second. So now you have a mass rate, right? And that's what we're interested in. So um, if we divide that mass by our volume, then we're back to having a concentration. So they're all related. And this works pretty much for any CSTR. Um, often what you'll see in CSTRs is that they're going to have equal flow rates in and flow rates out. Uh, if, you're, if they're going to be operated for any length of time, that's obviously how they need to be operated or they're going to overflow or they're going to run empty. So usually, or at least often, you can assume, because you know, that the Q, the flow rate in, will be equal to the flow rate out. And why this is important is because we no longer have to worry about differences in our Q, and we know we don't need to worry about any changes to our volume, which would be a big deal, right? Because if your flow rate in is more than your flow rate out, you're going to accumulate volume, and because volume is a component of the mass, right, the total mass of the system, you know, you just everything becomes more complicated. So we can simplify the system a little bit, actually quite a bit, by making that assumption there. And then so we can rewrite this as our change in mass relative to time is equal to the flow rate of the system times the concentration in. Now this of course, this concentration is independent. It doesn't change over time. That's another assumption, right, that this concentration will never change. Uh, and then minus our rate out, which now is the flow, volumetric flow rate of the system times the mass divided by the volume. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it in terms of getting everything in place. Uh, from here on out, it's basically just solving it as a differential equation, which, um, how much more? We're about halfway through the solution, so um, I think I will go ahead and switch to a different um, page here. So, <clears throat> Let me rewrite that though. DM change in mass relative to time is equal to our flow rate CN minus Q or flow rate times mass divided by volume. Okay, so once we have this set up, we're ready to start our differential equation, which in this case is as far you know, in the realm of differential equations, this is a relatively simple one. 
because we really don't even need to do, I mean, we could solve it through integration, but we don't actually have to because we know that the general solution for, let's say GS for linear uh, first order. equations are going to always be in the form of dy dt minus a uh, y plus b. If, if you have a linear first order equation, well this is a linear first order equation, if you have a differential equation set up like this, you can solve it pretty easily because we know that the solution is going to be y equals b over a plus our constant of integration times uh, e to the at. So this is what we're you know, ultimately solving for or towards. So if we rewrite our equation as change in mass relative to time is equal to negative flow rate over volume times mass plus Q times C in, then we can see that we have this is our A. This is basically Y. And this is B. So if we just you know put that into the equation then we have the solution where m at time t is equal to q times c n over q over v uh, actually volume plus our constant times e to the negative q over volume times t. And this we can simplify down to our mass at time t is equal to basically, you know, we can cancel these flow rates out and since we have the inverse of an inverse for our volume, our volume is just goes back to being volume times our concentration in plus C E uh, to the negative Q T volume. All right, so that's our general solution to a CSTR concentration. Now, Obviously, we still have a constant here. So if we want to solve this in terms of our particular CSTR or, you know, for, yeah, I guess in, in, uh, for our particular CSTR, we need to solve for our constant, right? And so you always really, when you need to solve for a constant, you're going to be solving for boundary conditions. And usually, if you only have one constant, which we do in this case, because we're not doing double integration, so we only uh, we can solve for our constant pretty easily by using a time of zero, right? So before the system starts, before we start our Q in, um, what is our mass inside the tank at time zero? Basically, is what we want to solve here because everything else is a constant, right? Our our volume's a constant, our CM's a constant. Um, our Q is a constant, our volume again is a constant. So really we just want to solve for mt at zero, so or m at time of zero. So m zero is going to be equal to um, our volume times our concentration n plus c, right? Because T is going to be zero at time zero, obviously. And so that makes this all zero. And E to the zero is one. So basically this whole part of that um, 
you know, this side goes away, it just becomes C. Or C, you could say like C times one if you really wanted to. But I don't. So then we can solve C pretty easily, right? It's just our mass, our initial mass of the system minus our volume times Cn. So that's pretty pretty simple. Um, we can, you know, really what it comes down to is you need to know the mass of the system when you, before you start, right? Which makes sense, right? Is it, is this water clean to begin with or is it already contaminated? All right, let me close it out and do one more. Huh, not sh sure how that happened exactly. Uh, so since we had, um, well, I'll just go ahead and write it out as one final, actually we only got one thing left, so basically mt, our mass at any time t, is going to be equal to our volume times our concentration in, uh, plus the mass, our initial mass minus again our volume times concentration uh, concentration in e move that over just a little bit e to the negative qt over volume okay and so that is our final solution Okay, so thank you very much for joining us. If you made it this far through the tutorial or the discussion, lecture, whatever you want to call it, um, we really do appreciate your support uh, watching the videos. If you want to see more videos and you, you want to help our channel out, obviously, you know, subscriptions are super, super, super helpful for getting us started. Um, make any comments if you enjoyed the video or, or want to continue this conversation or have uh, suggestions for our next videos uh, but no matter what if even if you do none of that it's great also it's cool uh, we really appreciate you being here thanks